Hi everybody, I'm here uh, on Facebook and uh, we were doing a little uh, experiment here and uh, asked you to ask me any questions you might have about uh, career-wise or otherwise and uh, so um, I've received quite a few so we're going to spread this out over a few days and each day I'll be answering uh, about three of your questions, sometimes maybe it'll be a little bit more or less. But I realize uh, after traveling around the world, I get a lot of the same questions um, asked many times. Thought it'd be kind of fun and an opportunity for you, even if you'd like to respond back, and we can maybe answer those questions uh, in further episodes as well. So um, these came from all over the world because, uh, well, it's great fun having traveled around the world and, and seeing people from around the world. So I'll answer these as honestly as I can. I haven't really proofread some of them, so we'll see uh, what we get. First of all, can you give us a little of your musical background? Sure. Uh, well, from the early formative years, I grew up in a little town called Mooresburg. It's just south of Ottawa on the St. Lawrence River, uh, a town of about well, uh, 2,400 maybe now residents. They're probably yelling at me right now because it's probably gone up in numbers. Um, but anyway, a uh, beautiful little village right on the St. Lawrence River, uh, pretty much at the edge of the Thousand Islands region, a little further uh, east of there. But. Um, Growing up in this little town, uh, my mother was a school music teacher, itinerant teacher. She had uh, six schools in five days, so I'd have to say she was my very first music teacher and uh, uh, quite influential, or influential early on. Um, dad, great hockey player, always uh, envisioned one of his three boys becoming a great hockey player. And um, I, being the oldest of three boys, was put into hockey at a very early age. Dad decided that. Um, I was doing so well at age uh, six or seven that he would put me into figure skating to help me develop my stops and starts. And well, from those of you uh, who live in Morrisburg, you know that took off in a completely different direction. Dad put me into um, the lessons and after doing um, well, almost 12 of my badges in a couple of years on a pair of hockey skates, uh, the coaches came up to my father and actually said, you better get yourself, a, you better get your son a pair of figure skates out there before he kills himself. So he did and he gave me my mother's. Anyway, uh, that was always fun. Uh, we dyed them black, but before we did that, I had to prove actually that I really wanted to do this sport. And I can remember my parents and my uh, dad putting me out on the figure skating session on a Saturday night, eight o'clock at night, uh, when all the, everybody was holding hands and going out on their dates. And here is this little boy tripping on his picks, trying to uh, find his way around the outskirts of the boards. Um, uh, but he saw my perseverance. And uh, so yes, they dyed them black. And eventually I ended up with my own pair of figure skates and uh, went on to do go up to a uh, gold level test in free skating and silver test in, in, uh, and in my uh, dances and well as far as figures were concerned back then those little figure eights who cares we didn't have much of an interest in that <laughs> but um, I, I loved the sport and uh, I did that until I was 18. Uh, came second in uh, New York uh, in the, the state of New York uh, that was my uh, maybe big claim to fame. Never made it to anything like nationals or anything, just loved the sport. And um, uh, it was fun. I was the first male in the community to actually go through that. And by the time I left, there were six other boys in the little town of Mooresburg uh, skating. And one of them went on to do some uh, terrific things on the national level as well. But um, I went to University of Toronto after that. And I um, decided uh, during my high school years, um, I picked an instrument that uh, was sitting on the top shelf collecting dust. It's called the bassoon. And uh, in my uh, 11th grade uh, uh, and my uh, third year of uh, studying the instrument, uh, I was chosen for the second time to be the principal bassoonist for a, a Tri-County Youth Orchestra. And uh, that was the best in three counties coming together for four days of intense playing. And uh, we had Professor Bonnenberg from the Metropolitan Opera Company come up uh, to our uh, county uh, youth orchestra back then. And that was the turning point for me musically. Um, I did not uh, really understand classical music or opera music. And of course, uh, as far as I was concerned, all the tunes that he was bringing were uh, great fun to play because they were all from Bugs Bunny. So uh, Barbara of Seville and La Traviata, all these wonderful uh, um, operas influenced me to want to go on and study music uh, in, uh, at a professional level. Uh, so I auditioned at the University of Toronto, uh, which had the best performance school back in the 80s at that time. And um, I went on to uh, uh, graduate uh, a few years later. I had some wonderful experiences thanks to the University of Toronto. Um, I played uh, in my second year the contrabassoon. I was given uh, five weeks to learn it. 
and we did the Enderled River Requiem. It was the first Canadian cast recording of that. So over 500 voices from across uh, Canada were chosen, including the soloists. All had to be under 25, age of 25, and the Univer uh, University of Toronto was chosen for that. That was a big highlight in my career. Of course, uh, now uh, looking back, having Andrew Davis, Sir Andrew Davis, to study under was absolutely wonderful as well. Uh, he was the, uh, of course, the um, conductor of the Toronto Symphony. Playing with the Toronto Symphony Youth Orchestra was also another highlight, and going down and doing the 1812 Overture at Ontario Place in Toronto. I was great fun playing with my uh, teacher at the time, who I have to credit was my greatest uh, probably teacher musically along the way, David McGill. Uh, in fact, my first lessons as a bassoon player, I wasn't even allowed to touch the instrument. I had to listen for two weeks to Maria Collis and uh, learn how to do phrasing and all the rest of it through a, a woodwind instrument. And uh, ironically, years later, I ended up uh, becoming a, a singer. So uh, uh, a couple of years, I called it after when I graduated, I decided I didn't want to make reads the rest of my life. I thought singing would be so much easier, how wrong I was. But um, I uh, actually won a karaoke contest. Uh, won $1,000 at the end, uh, two contrasting pieces. So I ended up singing uh, Never Gonna Give You Up, Rick Astley, and Phantom of the Opera, Music of the Night, to uh, then go on and uh, be seen with some friends of mine who had actually um, were studying and had graduated from Sheridan College, which many of you probably know from the Toronto area, is uh, one of the best colleges in Canada as well, producing triple threats. And also, uh, just uh, one of the professors just wrote Come From Away, and if you haven't seen that show, make sure you go and see it, it's a wonderful show. Uh, but um, they were the ones that were inspirational and influential in me actually becoming a, a singer. And uh, one of them actually called me up and said they're doing Beauty and the Beast in Florida and uh, they're looking for a beast and we thought of you. So that's where it all kind of started, headed down there. And um, well, I'm sure you can ask me any other questions after that, what it was like Beauty and the Beast and Kids Play. Uh, I got another question here. Uh, when did you know you were you could sing? Well, that was pretty much in the early years, uh, my formative years, uh, because my mother was a church organist. Um, I remember being in a little white gown, and they'd have to pop me up on the, the bench, part the curtains. Mom would always whisper to me a few bits before and say, the choir doesn't sound so great today. We're going to need to have you sing. So she would hand me the Praise Ways little booklet. And um, from there, I, uh, she'd say, page 65, it only takes a spark just follow the notes so with my little book I would stand there and I would read the notes and I remember sitting back down and uh, Nancy Smith who was sitting beside me at the time looked at me and said I don't understand how you can understand all those little black dots <laughs> anyway that was my beginning uh, uh, realization that I could actually read music and um, uh, those were the formative years when I as a boy soprano and I believe that my Aunt Debbie actually has a recording of me still singing that uh, at her wedding. I was 11 years old singing with my brother, uh, my middle brother, Ronnie, uh, and uh, we were doing uh, singing the song, We've Only Just Begun. Kind of sounds like that for Ronnie, but anyway, um, it was a, a great, great experience, and I think that recording is still out there. So Aunt Debbie, if you have that, hold on to it. <laughs> Everybody's going to be screaming to hear that voice, soprano voice. I can see, hear that now. Um, what motivated you to pursue a professional singing career? Uh, desperation. Um, uh, actually, I always loved to sing, and it just seemed like the natural progression. Um, and actually, it's all started in karaoke, <laughs> of all places. But it's a great avenue for actually a lot of uh, singers to uh, develop their skills, working a crowd, etc. And back then, I'm talking in the 80s, we had a lot of those kinds of clubs, so I would go and sing in a lot of them. And uh, I just, uh, I always enjoyed it. It came back to me at that point in my life. I was about 27 years of age when I started to pursue all of that professionally, even though I had been in uh, several choirs prior to that, paying the bills uh, for university, singing at uh, Yorkminster Park, Baptist Church in Toronto, Reading Young and St. Clair, beautiful double choir, probably one of the highlights of my career uh, singing uh, there as well. So that's a little bit of the formative years and uh, the three questions that I got from one of you. We'll be back each day with three different questions along the way, so stay tuned. Thanks for joining in.